Hi everybody, welcome to A Valiant Effort, it's Ted, and today we're going to be talking about Audi. Now, a lot of you probably think of Audi as an unreliable brand, and I, I don't even necessarily think that you'd be wrong. Audi has historically been pretty unreliable, but I think post-2010, see a bit of a change. Audi's really turned it around, and I think today they're the most reliable of the three German brands. But even going back to the 90s, they had the 2.8 uh, V6 in the B5 A4, they had the 2.5 liter five cylinder, and in the last 10 years they've had some really excellent engines, including the third generation of the two liter, uh, the four cylinder that's in the Golf R, the GTI, we've reviewed a bunch of those, and the three liter supercharged V6. Now, the turbocharged, we don't know yet whether or not that's gonna be considered a reliable motor, but the three liter that was in the BAS4, oh, and the three liter V6 that was in the BA and BA and a half S4. Now that's the car we're gonna be talking about today. Nick sold this about a year ago, but we've got some great footage of it and we wanna talk about whether or not it's a car that you can afford. Two thousand ten to two thousand twelve was the B eight, and two thousand thirteen to two thousand fifteen was the B eight and a half. Now we're going to be going over some of the differences between the two, but those are the year ranges, and we recommend really going for twenty eleven and up. So let's talk about reliability and common problems that you might run into if you buy a B eight or B eight and a half S four. So is the B eight and B eight and a half S four reliable? The short answer is yes, one hundred percent yes. Every car, the S4, A6, SQ5, all cars that were fitted with this 3 liter supercharged V6, people report really good things. Um, a lot of these engines have been known to get over 200,000 miles. You can look online, there's a lot of people who have documented their experience. Nick had all the way up to 152, 153 before he sold his and it was running great. So generally speaking, yes, these are very reliable. It has a reliable drivetrain. There don't seem to be many reports of issues as far as electronics are concerned and other things like that. So this car, uh, from the experiences that we had and the experiences that we hear from a lot of you out there, these are incredibly stout cars. Now, obviously they are expensive to maintain, but rarely do they break. So that being said, we have to talk about the known failure points. To list them off real quick, water pump, thermostat, DSG, PCV valve, and the cats randomly fail. Seemingly for no rhyme or reason, that's really the only one that doesn't have uh, an addressed solution. Now the water pump failures were mainly relegated to 2010 and some 2011s. They were changed from plastic to metal mid-2011, so if you want to be safe about it, just go for 2012 and up. Uh, but that said, most have probably been changed by now, so in 2022, it's likely not a concern buying a 2011 or 2010. Another known issue is the thermostat. Now, this is mostly relegated to 2010s. Some say there was an update for the B8.5, so in 2013. Some argue that there was no update. Um, either way, uh, these are replaceable, and if it has failed, it's likely been replaced by now. So again, buying one in 2022, not as big an issue. Now for the DSG, it was the mechatronic unit that would fail and it could potentially ruin the entire transmission. Now in 2014, these were supposedly updated. So if you're looking for a DSG, we recommend getting a 2015 or 2016. Uh, and on top of that, every other issue that we're gonna talk about here and already have talked about had been resolved by that point. So those are the best years to go for it anyway. Now the final thing to note is that the PCV valves were known to fail and they were supposedly updated for the B8.5, but Nick had a 2015 and at 120 or 130,000 miles that failed and needed replacing anyway. So um, ultimately those aren't too bad. They are expensive. It's about $450 for the part, but we were able to do the maintenance and I think a lot of you could too. One final, final note here in the reliability section is about the stock clutch. Now, some people say the stock clutch doesn't hold up well to tunes. That may be true. Uh, now, Nick's particular car, which is a 2015, was EPL Stage 2 with the smaller pulley, so it made about 385 wheel on 93. And it was tuned from 74,000 all the way up to 152, 153. Um, now, that's just our anecdotal experience, but I don't know if I would let that scare you off from tuning it. So if you buy one of these, you may be wondering, 
Am I gonna be able to work on it? If so, what tools am I gonna need? So let's talk about that right now. Now, a lot of you may be a little nervous about buying and maintaining a German luxury sedan, a performance car. And yeah, there, there are things to be nervous about. Obviously, parts for these are very expensive. Tires are expensive. Uh, you know, even brakes are pricier, certainly than your Honda Accords or Ford Focuses or whatever, it, uh, whatever else there is that you're driving. Um, so you're gonna have to expect more on maintenance costs. We did a couple of things to this car. We did the PCV valve, which is a huge task. You have to take the supercharger out. There's some coolant pipes that need to be moved out of the way. Uh, that was 500 bucks for the part. For the part. We also did front motor mounts, which requires taking the subframe and, and dropping it down so that you can get up in there and get to those. That was a real bear of a job. Uh, it took us a whole Saturday into Sunday. Also $500. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money to maintain these. But as rookies, as we are, we're just pseudo mechanics. We're just guys hanging out with some tools in a garage. We were able to do all those jobs successfully. So to do some of these jobs, it requires removing the supercharger. And when we first heard that, we were a little nervous, but we found that it was actually a pretty easy job. And by the second time doing it, because uh, one of the three of us forgot to put a heat shield back on, so we had to take it all off again, that was fun. Uh, we actually ended up doing it in like 10 minutes. First time taking it off was about two hours uh, because we're, we're bumbling and, and silly when we approach these things. But once we knew what we were doing, happened like that. These cars aren't that hard to work on. You need torque spits um, and you're gonna need to be pretty confident. Uh, if you've done an oil change on a Toyota, you're probably not ready <laughs> to work on an Audi S4. But if you've tackled timing belts and you've tackled brakes and you've tackled some other things that are a little a uh, higher level, then if you're a bit experienced, this car isn't that hard to work on for just some guy. Uh, you're just gonna need to get a lot of the specialized tools and that's where some of that price, some of that expense is gonna come in because you do need a whole different set of tools to work on these German cars because they refuse to just do six points, but you know, whatever. Just keep in mind that a lot of these things, if broken, are even more expensive to fix. So like we did, try not to tackle anything that, uh, you know, might be beyond your skill level because it, it does get expensive when things break and it's better to just pay the shop the, you know, 1500 bucks or 1800 bucks or whatever it is to do the job right the first time if you can't do it. That's common sense, but, you know, we tackled some stuff that was a bit beyond and we're lucky to have gotten out of it with you know, no financial ruin. So overall, yeah, it's a little more difficult to work on than most things. It's gonna cost more, but we do think that most people who have some good experience can work on this car. I mean, if we can do it, a lot of people can do it. So if you have some decent experience and you're comfortable working on cars, don't let the German brand dissuade you from buying it because you can do some of this stuff. Now, the last thing that we're gonna talk about, which you probably already know, if you're gonna be buying one of these, if you're looking for them, is the driving experience, which we think is, or at least I can say I think, is one of the best cars I've ever driven. WE touring exhaust. <laughs> Woo -hoo. Oh. Now, Nick is giving this car away. He's not giving it away. He's, he's selling it. He's trading it in. So I don't want to uh, I don't want to be too much. It's also not my car, so I want to be pretty gentle with it. But uh, that was only to about 42, 4300 RPM, and that's what it sounds like. Uh, but just listen to this thing. Oh. And just the sound of the supercharger mixed with that exhaust 
If I don't, if I don't give it enough gas to have the supercharger kick in, listen to this. Oh, God. <laughs> Holy crap, it's fast. Woo. All right, all right, slowing it down. Slowing it down, slowing it down. All right, let's roll these windows up. Let's not get too excited here. Put the windows up. Still a gorgeous tone. Welcome back to Valiant Effort. I'm Nick. I'm Ted. I'm Josh. And today we're driving a 2015 six-speed Audi S4. <laughs> that truck's coming up fast. So now that we're at 65. <laughs> it just, it really takes a lot to get up the highway speed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's very, very slow. Uh -huh. Especially seen in that 20 to 60 time. One of my favorite things about this car is its comfort. If you want a car that you can have a lot of fun with, but you can also drive, as Nick did, 25, 30,000 miles a year in complete comfort, this is a great car. Now, honestly, if, if you watch reviews of, of Audis, especially performance model Audis, S and RS models, you, that's, what they're, that's what they're for, and that's what they're great at. They give you speed, they give you, in normal circumstances, yeah, sure, again, maybe this pushes on a track through corners. Uh, now, I, I can't say for sure. I've never taken it on a track, but I'm reviewing this. We're, we're talking about this. If you're going to buy one of these used, it, is it going to be fun on the road? Because that's probably where you're going to take it. Because let's be honest, this isn't the car you pick for the track. I'm definitely going... This is the funny thing about this car. You get to the corner and you kind of think, oh, am I going a little too fast? You go around the corner and it goes, no, you're fine. And then you feel kind of dumb because you're like, well, that just... I literally just turned the wheel and the car was like... It, like, I didn't skip a beat. It was just like, yay, yeah, hey, you know, this is... Uh, what, what are you complaining about, you know? But this thing, it's, it's just... It's comfortable, it's fun, and I think that's what's most important. You know, if you're looking for a car to give you an all-around experience, um, this is a great one. So as the sun's setting here... <laughs> more nice and easy downshifts. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's so fun it's so fun and it, it growls at you and just giving it a little spirit here if I just <laughs> and that's 50% that's throttle you know 50% throttle I don't think, I, I think, look, if, if you can work on these yourself, conclusion time, if you can work on this yourself, I, why do you not have one? That's the question I'm asking, and that's the question I'm asking myself. The B8 and B8.5 S4 is one of the best all-around cars of the last two decades. Insane performance with a moddable yet reliable powertrain, assuming you get the manual. For me, Ted, it's so hard to be objective about my quote-unquote attainable dream car, but I think that this genuinely offers a perfect all-around package. All-wheel drive, an incredible noise, a pretty and timeless exterior, a comfortable, quiet interior, and, to top it all off, a manual transmission. Should you buy? Yet. Yeah. Uh, no, actually, no, don't buy it. Terrible car, and uh, let it depreciate even more. Thanks for watching. Don't ask me for an objective perspective on this car because I don't think I have one. <laughs> I mean, ah, listen to that. It is very nice, <laughs> especially for you, but yeah, yeah. It's kind of like the first time we drove, I, like, you drove it top down on the highway, like, next to it. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. And you were like, oh, my gosh. Yeah.
Yeah. What can what more can you say?